upbringing. The future of every individual is closely related to the impressions and influences experienced during childhood and youth. If children and young people are brought up in a climate where their enthusiasm is stimulated with higher feelings, they will be vigorous in mind and display good morals and virtue. Little attention and importance is given to the teaching of cultural values, although it is most necessary to education. If one day we are able to ensure that it is given importance, then we shall have reached a major objective. Improvement of a community is possible by elevating the coming generations to the rank of humanity, not by obliterating the bad ones. Unless the seeds of religion, traditions, and historical consciousness germinate throughout the country in the place of every bad element that has been eradicated, new bad elements will inevitably grow up. Books to be read by children, no matter whether they are in prose or verse, must give resolution to the spirit, soundness to the mind, and strength to hopes, so that we may raise generations with strong wills and sound ideas. Such educators, as not have been apprenticed to a master and have not received an education from a sound source, are like blind persons trying to light the way of others with lanterns. Mischief and impudence observed in a child are due to the atmosphere in which he or she has been brought up. The discord in family life increasingly reflects upon the spirit of the child and therefore upon the society. In schools, at least as much stress must be laid on good manners as upon other subjects if children are to grow up with sound characters. Education is different from teaching. Most human beings can be teachers but the number of educators is severely limited. Good manners are a virtue and greatly appreciated in whomever they are found. The one with good manners is liked, even though he or she may be uneducated. Communities devoid of culture and education are like rude individuals in whom it is not possible to find either loyalty and friendship or consistency and enmity. Those who put their trust in such people are always disappointed, and those who depend upon them are sooner or later left without support. Although it is fundamental that girls should be brought up to be delicate like flowers and mild and affectionate educators of their children, due attention must also be given to making them inflexible as defenders of truth. Otherwise, we shall have transformed them into poor, impotent beings for the sake of delicacy and mildness. We must never forget that a female lion should nevertheless keep the attributes of a lion. The humanity of a human being is directly proportional to the purity of his or her emotions. Although those who are full of bad feelings and whose souls are influenced by egoism look like human beings, whether they really are or not human is doubtful. Almost everyone can be successful in physical training, but there are few who are able to educate their minds and feelings. The former training is the means of producing men of muscle, while the latter produces men of spirituality. The first school for children whose souls are as bright as mirrors and as quick to record as cameras are their homes. The first educators are their mothers, and thus it is fundamental for the existence and stability of a nation that mothers should be brought up as good teachers. <laughs>